hello there, this is RJB for RJB TV, and today we're doing semi-final number two in Hamburger Sasu's tournament. It's the player's um, vacuum, also known as Dap Dap He, also known as Gultong Kong. I'm going to call him Kong. And now we've got the player Most, also known as SH. Although, in this particular series, it actually turns out that after I did some research, I found... Well, well, let's start. Let's, let's just start over. When I was looking at the APM EAPM for the replays, I noticed that something didn't make sense, and that is that SH's EAPM was way higher than it usually is. And then I did some small research, and I found out that in fact, instead of SH playing in the semifinal, it was Li Baku, even though Li Baku was already eliminated. So that's a little something I figured out. So we're looking at Libaku returning for a second chance, basically, in the semifinals. He has replaced SH unofficially. This is actually not legal. Libaku wasn't supposed to replace SH, but, you know, I figured it out that they switched for the semifinals. Not sure what the deal is, I don't really care about the deal, but, you know, I'm not gonna lie about him being SH when he's clearly Libaku. Libaku here on the blue Zerg on the top of the map. They're on the 12 o'clock spawn location, and we've got a Kong, Kong here on the bottom side of the map as the purple Protoss. Usual stuff is happening. Pile on there in the choke. Actually, that's not that usual. That's not that usual. It might actually be something like a double gateway in the front. It's just almost like a proxy mid gate. Although the distance traveled is not as far as all the way into the middle, this technically is a proxy mid-gate. It's just like a couple meters away from the middle. But basically it has the same effect. Gateways are close to the middle, very short travel distance to your opponent. Also just to um, reiterate some of the rules that are involved in this tournament, or that are part of the tournament, no cannons on the middle. And I think no extra bases as a Protoss. And so far, the no extra bases rule hasn't really negatively impacted the Protoss so far. So actually, the Protoss is still winning most games. It's still looking very strong. And Terran and Zerg still have trouble winning against the Protoss. So even though these nerfs and these rules to make the other races a little bit stronger, hasn't really affected the results all that much which maybe goes to speak about how strong Protoss really is on the fastest map. He finds the choke here, Probe walks its way in, gonna try to deny some of that Probe there by attacking the drone to prevent the Sunken from coming down, but there's two drones there on the front. The Zerglings are already on the way, gonna get at least one Sunken down. The second Sunken is getting denied continuously. Second Probe there also arrives on the scene to try and at least keep only one sunken there in the front up and running. Got Zealots on the way as well, so the Zealots are gonna be a problem here for Lee Baku, but he does have Zerkus on the way. Adding on two more creep colonies as the probes are caught off guard and don't stop the creep colonies from coming down. Zerk is surrounding the Zealots, gonna try to go for the probe there first. Sunken finishes there in the back. Zealots are running to the backside now, gonna try to get some drone kills. There's only four Zerkus there alive in. Uh, to keep them away. Two more have just spawned. So let's see how many drone kills can Kong get here. Gets one, gets two. That's pretty big so early on through the game. There's only six drones left there on the minerals, but I don't think this last Zealot is going to get any more drone kills. He's gonna try to get one more though, but I don't think he's gonna succeed. Will he though? Yeah, he gets number three there as well. So once again, six drones left alive. Libaku gets slowed down pretty badly there, losing three drones there in the back in total, and forced to make a lot of Zerglings as well, and also forced to make not, not two, not three, but four creep colonies and sunken here in the front. That's way more than you would usually want to build, because it just costs so much money, and you lose so much money by having drones not mining minerals, but turning into sunkens. It's never really nice. This is a pretty bad scenario. But a bad scenario doesn't mean the game is over, it doesn't mean the game is lost. And if anyone can maybe make a comeback here, it's Leibok, he's pretty damn skilled. Although he did lose in the quarterfinals, you know, 
I still do think he is the best player in the tournament. But being the best player in the tournament doesn't mean you are winning the tournament itself. It still go either way. So Kong here goes with a very fast sideboard double a double assimilator. No extra nexus, only still on a single nexus. But he's going hard on a very, very strong all-in strategy. He's got the Citadel of Duna on the way, more pylons there, as well as this, the Skeleton Robotics. The most important, crucial structure for his strategy is there on the way as well. Libagu on a single extra hatchery there in the back. So three hatcheries in total. His drones are locked out of base because he keeps blocking his front there with those circlings. He cannot get back in. He can't get in. He has to click on the minerals itself to get those drones into the base. Yeah, he clicks on the minerals, drones get back into the base, but those drones dancing around there in the front also slows him down by quite a bit, because maybe he lost like a hundred minerals by having them mine so much later than they could have. But hatchet number four, they're on the way, hatchet number five, they're also on the way, and Goltong Kong here in the back has a shuttle also on the way. Support bay there also, of course on the way for reverse and shuttle speed. Zelda speed there also in the mix, not getting level 1 attack, he's not getting level 1 attack. He's just getting speed for his zealots. Usually people mix it up where with getting level 1 attack as well, because it's just so strong to get level 1 attack and zealot speed both at the same time to try and break through the choke. Reaver on the way there as well as the zealots are finishing up. He's gonna shuttle those zealots over the hill here for sure, because that's just the best thing he can do right now. Oh, he can also try to maybe break through this here, but there's only 12 zealots here in the front. Don't think he can actually break through those 5 sunkens there. Gonna get one more sunken there as well, so 6 sunkens in the front. Circus as well. So instead of trying to break through the choke, you might as well just shuttle the units right into your opponent's base. Now, Leibaku has a Hylodisk then finish and uh, Hylodisk speed there on the way. One second there being morphed in the back. Hyland is coming in to catch this army there on the bottom side, but level 1, no level 1 attack means Zealous Speed has just finished. No level 1 attack, just Zealous Speed. Zealous are running back and forth, trying to get something done, but Lee Baku here handling his Hylodisks very well, keeping those Zealous away. Zealous can't go in, and he knows it. Kong knows he can't go in just yet. He needs that reaver there on the scene, but because the shuttle is all the way here, not in the space, he can't go pick up the reaver. So all you can do right now is go in with the Zealots, try to do some damage, try to distract some, try to kill some Hydras, but there's nothing that he can really do with those Zealots. The Zealots are pretty much locked inside a prison, waiting to die, and die they will. Maybe get a couple of Hydra kills, one, two, three, maybe four or five, but not really achieving what he wanted to, but he is keeping Leibogu quite busy. And he cleans up that Zealot mass. Now, Libaku went for a lot of hatcheries very quick. He, the timings were very, very precise. He got everything just perfectly in time while getting as many hatcheries as he could. And now that he has so many hatcheries, he's got six of them in total here in the back, one in the front, he's worked a lot of seven. He's got a lot of droning potential. He can become very rich very quick with this many hatcheries. And because Goltong Kong is only on a single nexus, I do feel he's gonna fall behind. He's already on 32 probes compared to 37 from Glibokku. That is already... I don't want to say it spells trouble, but he really has to make something happen. He has to make something happen, and he has to do it quick. And there's actually quite a good opportunity here, because there's two shuttles. One has Zealots, one has Reaver. Two shuttles for Glibokku to focus on. Now, which one of these two is actually going to go in and go for the drones? At the moment, both of the shuttles are just dancing back and forth on the sides to keep Libaku on his toes. Libaku lost his Overlord here in the base. There's a Dark Templar there entering the base as well, doing some scouting, but there's Overlords hanging around everywhere. And the Dark Templar actually successfully pulls their Hylodus to intercept it. Reaver there on the side. Reaver's too far away to shoot on the drones. The Reaver goes down there. Not a very successful attempt there. The idea from Gold Tong Kong was really, really, really good. He used the Dark to distract, but Libaku maybe was a little bit overzealous with sending his Hydras, all of his Hydras, to intercept it. In the end, he doesn't take any damage. He doesn't take any damage, and both players now on equal worker counts. 
There's a lot of shuttles now on the map here for Golton Kong. There's a lot of Zealots, Star Templars, and a Reaver inside those shuttles as well. Gonna unload there somewhere on the side. Gonna shuttle all those units over the hill here and load them here inside the base. But I do think Libaku can see it. I mean, he can see it for sure. And his hiders are already moving into position to intercept it. He's got a lot of scorches as well. To intercept the shuttles and stop this from happening whatsoever completely. Most of the scorches are overshoot and the zealots now in the base chasing down the hydras. The zealots have level 1 attack I hope. Level 1 attack has finished. The hydras are on 0, zero still. We've got two evil chambers there though so the upgrades will soon be on the way. So hunting for shuttles there with the scorches. Oh this is so many zealots. The reaver goes down which is the most important unit to kill. But another drop there already on the way with two high templars there on the bottom side on the right side. And now there's a lot of zealots inside of Limaku's base. Limaku is losing all of his units there at completely. He sniped the shuttle there though. The most important thing to have taken down. He sniped the shuttle. That's all that mattered. And now the realists are spawning to take care of all the zealots. Limaku is dancing on a knife edge, but everything is working out exactly just within time. Like within a matter. Like he's seconds away, seconds away from dying every single time, but every single time the timing of his unit spawning is absolutely perfect, absolutely perfect. So now the Mulists are ready to clear out the Zealots, drops on the way here, but the Scorch intercepts the shuttle dodge, just the Scorches stays alive, Templar tries to storm the Scorches but misses the storm and Templar number 2 doesn't come low. Temple gets taken down and no storm on the drones, drones all still alive. Goes to attack the lair just a tiny little bit to annoy him. You're back at home, a couple more gateways have been added on. Nexus number 2 also added on to just boost up the economy. Currently on 46 probes against 44 drones, although now 48 drones. Libaku is joining up quick and fast to get as big as he can, as fast as he can. But now a frontal attack is happening as well. There's actually the Dark Templar there in the mix and no detection. The Dark Templar alone can clear out all these Sunkens and he's gonna break through, walk through because the Sunkens are not strong enough to hold this. So Golden Kong, even on a single Nexus build order, is doing so much work. He's constantly attacking, constantly making new attacks. This guy is a treat to watch. Storm there comes down, but the Storm misses on this Mutalist, but the Shuttle might just go all the way in. Storm's on the Mutalist there in the end as well. Those are low HP. Recruits are coming in for the backhand as well. Another Templar there. Oh, that's both Templars turning into an Archon. So he broke through the choke. He achieved what he wanted to do. Liverpool has enough units to defend himself though. But once again, another drop there on the bottom right. Golden Kong is really playing rapid fire. Zealots on the drones. Ooh, Golden Kong, you are on fire. The attention to detail in his play is insane. Comes in from the bottom right there. Templars are loading on the scene. Templars storming. Templars killing almost all the drones. He went from 48 to 12. Oof. Libaku makes his first mistake. And that mistake is a costly one. Because at the moment he's got no choke. Pretty much no choke. There's two lurks there in the front. That will keep Golton Kong out for now. Golton Kong has observers on the way. Because he knows lurkers are present in the game. But Libaku now in a very painful little process of having to re-drone. While having almost no money. And almost no drones mining. His income is low and slow. This is a painful little period in Libaku's playstyle, in Libaku's game. He got all the wind taken out of his sails. And Golton Kong has all the wind in his own sails. He's just on fire. And I'm not even mad that he's winning this game. I mean, the game looks really, really good, really well performed from his side. I'm not even going to be mad if he wins because he has played this one so extremely well. It's a non-stop stream of attacks, and they're all really well thought out. And now that he's rich on 62 Pro, he's adding on all the gateways he wants, all the gateways he needs. So only on a single Robo, only on a single Robo. He does have Triple Forge, but I don't think he's got all the upgrades there on the way. Yeah, only attack, weapon attack upgrades are on the way. Level 2 weapon attack, but no upgrades on the way at the moment. Limoku himself is on 1-1 for his Hyras and Lurkers. 
So a frontal attack happening once again. Observer st is stays away at a good distance to stay away from the spore attack range. The lurkers behind the wall and behind the hatch are really burning those dragoons and making it hard to get in. It's hard to get in there. The shuttle drop though is going to be the most important thing. Although there's no Templars in there, you forgot to pick up his Templars. We will just come in to snipe the Observer. Observer goes down. Lurkers are protected and staying safe. Great move here from Lee Baku. But he is still behind in supply by about 70. His drone count is back on 54. So he is, you know, his money is once again coming into the bank. So he is catching up. He is catching up, making a comeback. He storm there on the Lurkers and a drone. Drop it on the side to take it down by the Scorch. No, the Scorch is miss it. Alright, he got it there in the end anyway. So yeah, the Lurkers mostly got taken down. There's only a couple of Serpents in the front left to keep uh, Lee Baku safe. But a Storm comes out on some Lurkers. Hyder's coming from the back to the front to try and mend the situation. To try and protect him from what looks to be a really bad certain death. He's just bleeding money into the wrong things. He's building the right things, but the money is all bleeding out. As Golden Kong is slowly taking over the game. More lurkers coming in there, there's no observer on the scene at the moment, but he just walks around, ignores the lurkers, walks deeper into the base, he's gonna go for a flank attack here inside the base or on the side, there's almost no units here to defend. Level 2 attack on those dragoons is pretty darn strong. So that's also pound away on the Hydras. Lurkers moving into the back to take care of the dragoons, the dragoons are now getting attacked, but the dragoons are gonna move away from the lurkers. Deeper into the backside of the base, where he has free fire on the drones that are... Well, he's not gonna fire on the drones, but the Zealot, though, actually is. He cleared out some drones here on the gas. We look he has almost no gas whatsoever. A lot of drones there, though, a lot of money, but he's still in a really bad spot. Observer arrives on the scene, so Lurker is no longer an issue to take care of. Cleared out the top corner there, but did cost him almost all of his meal discs, almost all of his Hydras. And he needs new Lurkers there in the front. Observer goes down once again, gets taken down by some Scorches. So yes, the Lurkers once again will serve a purpose for the greater good. But again, another Observer already arriving once again. Golton Kong is on absolute fire. Libaku is also playing really well there. Clears out the front once again. Observer pulls back, retreats. Still no upgrades here. Still no upgrades. He's not getting any more upgrades. He has... I think Golton Kong believes he has the game in the back. Do we have a drop somewhere on the map? I don't see a drop somewhere on the map. Shiloh is on the way there though. Bomb attack happening now as well. Sorry for that one. Yeah, Storms. This is a very slow rinse and repeat, but the situation looks to be going in Libaku's favor now. Libaku only has 39 drones though. He desperately needs another 12 or 20 drones on the minerals because he is running out of gas and he's gonna run out of minerals soon as well and when another storm drop comes in he will be toast actually i take back what i said earlier the game has started to look pretty grim here as he's losing his choke and the shuttle there makes its way in Lima could completely miss it Templar starts alone drones are running away Templar storms all the drones he gets a pretty hefty amount of drone kills, 16, 17 in total. But that is as bad as it can be. Does defend the front for now, but so many Hydras are dying. He's losing so much money. He's losing so much money while having so little money coming into his bank. That anything that dies, anything that dies is bad for Lego Boot. He does push the units away for now, again. Starts picking up some of the Templars into the shuttle for another drop, and if this one hits, the game is over forever. The front is once again secured though. That's what matters, the front is secured, so there is still a, a really good chance Olivia is going to come out on top, but the supply difference has me worried. Drop comes in, there's nothing in between, absolutely nothing in between. Drones are running away, but he's just going to keep chasing those drones down. There's nothing to intercept or kill the Templars. And he's got no money what all, whatsoever. Templars there, Templar storms, Templar gets two kills. It's only two kills, but... Ooh, he's just done for, he's done for. 
He's done for, he knows it. He's got 25 minerals there in the bank. He's got no units. No units whatsoever. And that's just it. Libaku couldn't. Couldn't. Keep up with his opponent. Not this time. Not this time. Let's give a win there to Gold Tong Kong. And look for replay number two in this best of five. I was I was rooting for Lee Baku. The game looked really good for him for a very short amount of time. Well, actually, the first 12 or 13 minutes, the game looked really good for Lee Baku. But after that one storm drop, and after his inability to drone up well enough, after his inability to drone up to the point where he wanted to be, the game just turned sideways downwards and Golton Kong just kept it the pressure and just snowballed out of control for Libaku to keep up with now we've got them again on the same races but swapped around we've got Libaku here on the Protoss and we've got Golton Kong here on the yellow Zerg well he's not gonna choke up he's not gonna choke up hatchery there in the base we might see a second hatchery actually Double hatchery in the base. No pool. Pool might come out later. Maybe he's gonna go for three hatchery pool. Maybe it's two hatchery pool. Some players really love to go for double hatchery pool. Some others go for three hatchery pool. You know, it's whatever they want to do. Now that's a pool. Now that's a pool. Libaku goes for a nexus to the two gateways. And he's scouting in the wrong direction. Now, the fact that Lee Baku is scouting in the wrong direction actually helps Gold Tong Kong out tremendously. Also, there's a chance that Lee Baku is only going to scout chokes because he is one of those players who tries to cut corners on his scouting by trying to scout as fast as he can by only scouting with chokes. And Scouting only the chokes is quite common amongst Koreans when they're playing Protoss and Berserk. Because there's a high, high chance that Berserk has a hatchery in the choke. Golden Kong, however, does not. Third hatchery there for four hatcheries in total there in the backs. Early extractor for Zergling speed or for early Hydras. Because when you play no choke, you have to get units quite early on to defend yourself. On those Protoss units. And Libaku is doing the standard three gateway production there as the Protoss. That is very standard. Nexus, triple gateway, forged cannon, cybercore. There it is. Cybercore, they're on the way. Zerg is moving out, ready to scout the map, but he already knows to a certain degree where Libaku is located. He's gonna try to kill that Zealot there, but Libaku might bring this out quite well, keep it alive for quite a long amount of time. Goes down there in the end, nonetheless though. Lair on the way, that's a very quick lair. And I don't see a pool, I mean a den. And I don't see Zerkling speed. He's playing this quite risky. He does know that Libaku is... well, making Zealots. And he still has some time before Libaku arrives here in the base. He starts making two more creep colonies as fast as he can. Because he's got no units. And he only has a single sunken finished. But these two sunkens might finish just in time as the zealots arrive there on the scene. And the Zerkens are ready to keep those zealots away from hitting the sunken there in the back. So everything comes up just about in time. Hylas then they're also on the way. Maybe going for lurkers. But I really do feel that just Hydras would be a great choice here. Although I don't really understand the very quick lair in this context. The very quick lair would make you believe that he's either going for Mule Discs or going for Lurkers. But Lurkers are expensive on his build order and I personally do feel that something like Hydra Discs are a better option to defend with. Because they are more, you know, versatile. They're quick to move around, very cheap to produce. But he's going for Lurkers. He's going for Lurkers. Lurkers are his choice of weapon. Libaku is going for no robotics. He's going for just gateway units. Temple's Archive, they're on the way. Zealous Speed, they're also on the way. Level 1 attack, all queued up. 
he's just gonna go and keep massing out his army. He's gonna keep massing, but the fact that Liabaku saw the lair, just when he moved that zealot in there, he saw the lair, and instantly he queues up a robotics facility. But, but, Golden Kong also sees the um, Temple's Archive, sees the Robo, he knows what's coming. But knowing what's coming as the Zerg in this specific case doesn't really help you out that much. Because you basically still have to do the exact same thing. That is, mass as hard as you can. And try to get as big as you can, as fast as you can, while fighting in a wide open space. Fighting in a choke is much easier. Fighting in this wide open space as a Zerg is very, very difficult. The Protoss just has to mass gateway units, which is very easy. Very easy to do. You just queue up some units and you send them over. Moon range also on the way, and so observatory also there to get detection for those lurkers. He does have some lurkers queued up here on the bottom of the top side of his base. Queen's Nest also is going for a very fast hive. Very fast hive there on the no choke world order. Most of the time you will see the Zerg just go for a mass hatchery and, and um, high lists. But Golden Kong has slightly different aspirations. So he tried to kill something on the side, not sure what it was, but he defended the hatchery. Hatchery just got cancelled and made a new one. 41 drones for Kong, 51 pro for Lee Baku. Game is looking pretty good here for Lee Baku. The fact that Kong went for all those lurkers has me feeling somewhat troubled. Because instead of having mass hydras, which are easier to defend with, he's got some lurkers, about four of them. But there's also an observer here for Lee Baku, so the lurkers are not gonna do shit. They're not gonna do anything at all. So Golden Kong has to be very, very quick, very quick with massing up on units, but he's 70 supply behind on his opponent. Does have high level speed there on the way, level 1 attack and level 1 armor also there being queued up there in the evil chambers. A couple more hatches on the bottom side. Hive has finished, very fast Hive. Can he get the Fighter Mount and Aspire? Libaku can go. Libaku can go. And he decides to walk his dragoons into some Lurker to take advantage. Of course by accident. Yeah, Observer arrives, Lurkers have lost their value because there's no Dark Swarm to protect them, and even if you had a Dark Swarm, there's Zealous to just mow down the Lurkers with ease. So Libaku now maxed out, pretty much maxed out. There are some uh, spores here to keep the Observer away, that's a very good move. And the Observer is going to fly into its death there, and that is going to keep Kong alive for now, because now the Lurkers have maximum efficiency as the detection is gone. Oh, he storms on the drones! Ooh, Kong couldn't pull drones away. He loses all those drones, and that's a massive, massive hit there. How many kills? 28 drone kills. That's massive. That's really, really bad. That's really bad for Cold Kong Kong, as now he's pretty much... This is as bad as it gets. Wide open base, no choke. Almost no units. I, I mean, I count like 7, 8 lurkers, 5 hydras. This is looking bad. He just have to spiral on the way in the back, but he has nothing to... He, he, he basically can't make units. He has to make drones, but he needs units. He needs units, but he can only make drones. Consume is on the way. The fighter not yet queued up. Hope of our lurkers being morphed. Hope of our spores ready to be morphed as well. Leibaku has level 2 attack on the way. These massive gateways are on the top side. He's massing 860 gateways. Because that's all he needs. Dragoons, Zealots, Observers, and Templars to win this game. He goes in from the left side, goes into the middle there. He's gonna try to break through. Observer has Observer range. Observer speed as well, but the Observer stays alive. Ooh. Goes down in the end. Goes down after all. So once again, Leva could lose the Observer. He won't be able to break through. Because there's... Ooh, storms again on the drones. How many did he get this time around? Ooh, went from... He only got about 10 or something, but still, losing 10 drones when you only have 34 is bad. That's bad. That's bad. That hurts. That hurts a lot. But he wisely pulls back, waits for another observer, waits for his gateway army to remax. He 
He's just doing exactly what he has to do. Not doing more, not doing less. He's doing exactly what he has to do. If only he could keep his observers alive, though, this game would have already been over. This game is an overtime, but only because Libaku keeps losing his observers. But now there's no spores. There's no spores except here on the bottom side. That spore is not going to protect the Lurkus on the top side, so he goes in there from the top side. The observer arrives on the scene as well. Boots are just hammering away with ease. A couple of units are on the side, gonna try to flank, but there's so many Dragoons, these couple Zerglings not gonna do much. He takes the care of a couple Templars though, but there's a drop coming in as well. Drop tries to pick up the Templars, but a little bit too late. Storm for the Zerglings, goes in from the top side there. Reaper arriving on the scene. He's gonna just shoot on the drones there from afar. Drones get shot on, drones go down, 12 of them left alive, picks it up, flies it closer, kills the remaining drones with another shot, 5 drones left alive, Shuttle takes the Reaper up and flies it back to safety, and Lilibut wins game number 2. Able to do wins game number two. And this game actually kind of shows why you don't do the build order that Kong did. The Lurker build order just doesn't work, I guess. It just doesn't work. So that's game number two. And the score is even. Both players have one win. Leave and one. Well, officially. It's SH, but Limoku is playing. Now, it's against the rules of the tournament, but, you know, it happened. So yeah, that's game number two. Thanks for watching. Come back for part number two tomorrow when I cast game number three, four, and five. As long as there are three, four, and five. But it's a best of five. So we're going to see tomorrow who is going to win and proceed to the finals. Will it be Kong? Or will it be Lee Baku? I don't know. So the one way to find out, that is by coming back tomorrow for part number two. Thank you for watching.